there. Hey. Welcome back to Neurotransmissions. So, we've learned about all of our other main senses, sight, sound, smell, and taste. Now we're back to talk about the final sensory system, your sense of touch. Somatic sensation is enormously important. Huh? How else would you tell the difference between the gentle touch of a feather and the scratch of sandpaper? How could you tell if you were wet or hot or too cold? Most of all, how could you tell if you were in pain? Yeah. Don't touch that dial until you find out. Yes. All somatosensory pathways have the same basic structure, so let's focus on one and then talk about some variations. Let's say I reach out and touch your arm. How do you feel it? This sensation begins with receptors located in your skin, called mechanoreceptors. Remember in our episode about the auditory system, we talked about the way that hair cells are activated by movement? Uh -huh. The mechanoreceptors in your skin are similar. They respond to pressure or distortion. We have four major types of mechanoreceptors scattered across our hairless skin, such as the skin on your fingers and lips and they all have pretty funny names. Meisner's corpuscles, or tactile corpuscles, respond to light touch and vibrations. These are very sensitive receptors for fine touch discrimination. Ruffini endings, or bulbous corpuscles, are located deeper in your skin and in the connective tissues of the body, and they respond to skin stretch and angle change in your joints. Merkel nerve endings, or Merkel discs, help us detect ongoing pressure, like a hand holding yours. Lamellar corpuscles, or Pacinian corpuscles, are highly sensitive to vibration. These receptors respond to sudden changes or disturbances, and are probably useful for distinguishing changes in texture. No matter which kind of receptor they are, they're located at the ends of afferent nerve fibers, that is, the nerve cells located in the periphery of the body. The nerves transmitting the sensation have their cell bodies in structures called the dorsal root ganglia, or DRGs. The DRGs are located along the outside of your spinal column, and are essentially bundles of cells, collecting all of the nerve fibers into one structure before projecting the signal onto the spinal cord. The cells in the spinal cord receive the signal and then send projections across the midline, the middle of the body, and the signal actually gets sent to the opposite side of your brain from the side where you felt it. So if I touch your right hand, the sensation gets passed on to the left side of your brain for processing. Huh. The next stop is the thalamus, acting as a relay for the sensory signals coming from your skin. Finally, projections to the postcentral gyrus in the parietal lobe of your cortex create a map of your body. By mapping all of the signals coming in from your skin to dedicated spots on your cortex, your brain is able to tell you exactly where you felt a given sensation. Of course, pressure and vibration aren't the only senses you detect with touch, right? Uh -huh. Our skin is also able to sense temperature and, obviously, pain. So, how can we tell if something is hot or cold, or if a pinch feels uncomfortable? Yeah. The trick is in the receptor. Our ability to sense temperature is something of a mystery. Scientists think that different types of nerve fibers are responsible for hot and cold sensation. There's also some evidence that a particular family of proteins, called transient receptor potential, or TRIP channels, might play a role and they're connected to other types of hot and cold we experience too. For example, TRPV1 channels, V for vanilloid, respond to capsaicin, the chemical that makes jalapenos spicy. Another type of trip channel, TRPM8, responds to menthol, a chemical that is found naturally in peppermint that produces a cooling sensation. Pain is a different animal. Here, I'm talking just about nociceptive or peripheral pain, which you sense in response to harmful stimuli. To detect pain, your nerves use specialized cells called nociceptors. These nerve fibers use temperature, pressure, and chemical stimuli to determine if something is painful or not. These receptors can be found in your skin, joints, and on some of your internal organs. Nociceptors are essentially just nerve endings embedded in your skin, like the roots of a plant. Let's say you've just gotten a paper cut. Ouch. There are three sorts of pain sensation associated with that. First, without thinking, you jerk your finger away. This is the result of a reflex arc, wherein a sensory neuron registers the painful stimuli and passes it along to your spinal cord. In the reflex response, the information doesn't get processed by your brain. Huh? Instead, it's passed right back out of your spinal cord via motor neurons that control your movement, causing your hand to jerk back. Huh. Next, you feel the first conscious sharp sensation of pain, as fast signaling nerves called A-delta fibers respond, passing the signal to synapses with neurons on your spinal cord. Like mechanical stimuli, this signal gets passed up to the somatosensory cortex, allowing you to consciously pinpoint the location of the pain. Ah, my finger! These fibers only react to mechanical and temperature stimuli, but not chemical, which might explain why you don't always feel the burn of lemon juice in a cut right away. Other nerve fibers, called C-fibers, react more slowly, passing along the deeper, aching pain. 
These cells project the spinal cord as well, though they synapse with a slightly different set of spinal cord neurons, which project the brainstem and the thalamus. Pain, temperature, and touch are all important for helping us to navigate the world. We're still learning a great deal every day about how the body processes these sensations. One thing we know for certain, your senses are all important for helping you develop a rich and complete perception of the world around you. Our sensory systems are vital to letting us move through and interact with our environment and better understanding our senses will allow scientists and doctors to develop new treatments for patients struggling with incomplete or damaged sensory systems. In a future video, we might talk about some advances being made in this arena. Let me know in the comments or on Twitter if this is a topic you're interested in hearing more about. So what does our brain do next with all of this sensory information coming in? Yeah. How do we use that information? Now that we've finished covering the senses, we'll start to explore more topics to answer these questions. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe to become a Brainiac. Also, if you really like what we do here, consider contributing on our Patreon account. Our content will always be free, but any help we can get from you will make our videos even better. I'm Allie Astrocyte, and until our next transmission, over and out.